Hi, Captain Steve for this week's Boat Test Reports. Thanks for being with us today. Our show this week is sponsored by ACR Artex. They're in the business of saving lives. Hello everyone, we're out in Indiana testing today when we got breaking news that Evernude Outboards has ceased production. It was well known that its two-stroke engine had trouble battling the four-stroke brands and its market share was low. The company's president said that the COVID-19 pandemic was the final nail in the brand's coffin. Ole Evernude invented the first outboard engine in 1907 and it blazed the way for the creation of what would become the largest segment in boating. We're sorry to see this great old name go after 113 years. We do have some good news. Two months of pent-up demand and the new awareness of importance of getting out of the house and on the water has ushered in a remarkable demand for new boats across the country. As many businesses struggle amidst the pandemic, it seems boating is staying afloat, with dealers reporting record sales. Business has been really strong, particularly the last 45 days. Blake Phillips, general manager at Marine Max in Quincy, says his sales are up 30 percent over this time last year. The dealership selling 100 boats so far this month. Those fortunate enough to buy searching for the great escape. I think coronavirus amplifies your appreciation for a great day. Because every day on a boat's a great day, people are connecting those dots and, and our leads and our business speak to that. We're receiving upwards of 200 leads a week right now. At Charlestown Marina, Chris Giroux says they've welcomed 30 new faces to the docks so far this year, with many more expected. International Boat Industry Magazine reports that Clark's Landing Yacht Sales, which has two locations in Maryland and one in New Jersey, has seen four million in sales in the past month. The dealership's general manager, Dave Pattonod, says sales have exploded over the past four weeks. Customers say they're not going on a cruise, not going on vacation and renting a beach house, so they're buying a boat to get the family out on the water. Out west in Washington State, Seattle Yacht Sales' Martin Snyder reports extraordinary interest in large boats that he has for sale. We're getting within two, three, five percent of the asking price of boats because there's not a lot of inventory out there. And at Seattle Boats, Jim Baker told IBI that he has already sold out of some inventory. IBI reports that Julie Marsh of Winnesquam Marine on Lake Winnesquam, New Hampshire, expected 2020 to be a poor year for sales, but it's been something different entirely. Insanity is how she described the start of her sales season. We can't get enough boats. People are going crazy to get in the water, she said. Because virtually all boat factories have been shut down for the last two months, the word on the street is consumers should not put off buying because most of the desirable boats will be sold off in many areas of the country. Now, we love talking to boaters and hearing their stories. For the next few episodes, we're going to be airing some clips from an interview that we did with Sean and Elizabeth, a couple in Seattle that recently shed their bonds with terra firma and moved on board their Nordhaven 43. Take a look. I have so many questions for you folks. I'm so glad you're joining us. Yeah. Well, thanks uh, for having us. When did you buy the Nordhaven? We've had the Nordhaven for two years now. So we've been boating for 16 years, started uh, boating in the Great Lakes. This is our fourth boat. So we started with a Glastron 249, it's a little pocket cruiser. Mm -hmm. uh, enjoyed that boat for six years on the Great Lakes, uh, moored in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and would frequently take it up to Door County. And then we, um, we wanted something larger, so we, we got a Carver, a, a 36 sport sedan, um, and we actually shipped that boat out here. We've been out in Seattle for six years now, boating, really moved out here. Uh, because of the boating, it's it, it's just a great place in the world and beautiful can, area. Yeah. yeah, and and to be able to use our boat year round in Milwaukee, we're always depressed, you know, needing to winterize the boat in the winter. Um, so we moved the Carver out here. We're, we're running our boats like you know every weekend we're on the boat and running, and we're like we got to get out of gas power and get a diesel powered boat, and that's when we got the Sea Ray. We got got a forty foot Sundancer. Uh, really enjoyed that boat. Actually took it out on the west coast of. Uh, Vancouver Island, circumnavigated the island, and not a lot of people uh, go out on the Pacific up here, just in the northern latitudes, it can get you know, pretty snotty and, and yeah. intimidating. Um, so, you know, for us to take a sea ray around the island, I think a lot of people thought we were crazy, but uh, enjoyed that trip. And then, you know, we realized that we still didn't have our long-term boat that fulfilled what we wanted to do with, with our boating goals, and, and, and Nordhaven fit that bill. All of those boats that we had kind of led up to us wanting different things so at first it was we wanted to move out here just to boat more and boat year round and then just the the beauty out here and you know we just started getting more hooked on 
longer range cruising. And it all kind of evolved into wanting a trawler where we could actually cross an ocean one day and not have to plan all of our trips based on, okay, where, when's the next marina so we can get fuel. Right, um, right. We, just, we just got the bug to be out longer and, and have more capabilities. You recently moved on to the boat. It was a goal of ours. We always wanted to, to move and live aboard the boat full time. So over the last six years, we've kind of downsized our life so that the transition would be easier. Um, it, it just in terms of the apartments and the condos that we had that bought or lived in, we just kept kind of going smaller and smaller and smaller and getting more and more of our possessions, uh, getting rid of those so the transition would be easier. So our last apartment that we had uh, was 500 square feet, so it really wasn't much larger than the boat. So, the, yeah. you know, the transition hasn't been that difficult for us. Thank you so much for this chat. It was great. We need to touch base again and see how the trips are going for you and how it's, it's working out with this, this goal that you've had. Because yeah. other people That's have right. it, so let's live vicariously through you. Yeah, thank you. thank you, Steve. Have a good one. Now you can follow their adventures on their YouTube channel under MV Freedom, and we'll hear more from them in next week's episode, so be sure to look for it. Now, I'm a big fan of catamarans because they're so stable and have more deck space than similar length monohulls. If you're interested in one, here are five things you need to know. Waves can get trapped between the hulls and sneeze out the front onto the deck, so make sure there's a wave splitter between the hulls for a drier ride. They cut water really well because their hulls are so narrow compared to a mono hull, which is much wider. When the going gets rough, slowing down is not always the best choice. Speeding up helps the bows do their job and they ride much better. Catamarans may lean into or out of the turns depending on the model. There's nothing wrong with this. It's just different than a deep V mono hull, which lays over to one side or the other. Just be sure to get used to it. Because there's more fiberglass surface in a catamaran, they're generally more expensive foot per foot. However, you have to remember that for a premium price, you're getting more interior space and much more stability in riding comfort. Monohulls have storage under the seats and in the deck. Catamarans have all of that, plus more in-deck storage and storage in both hulls. And there's never enough storage on any size boat. Now, when we do our boat reviews, as a third-party evaluator, we try to find what's different or intriguing about the boat. One of the fun things about buying a high-end boat is that some builders will permit a high degree of customization. Brazilian boat builder Schaefer is one of them. Boat test sees a lot of different boats, and the Schaefer 580 stands out as a model that illustrates some of the important things that can be done to personalize a large boat. Let's take a look. We enter through a glass slider that retracts fully into a pocket, leaving an entryway 4 feet 7 inches wide. The overhead here is 7 feet, where most others are 6.5 or 6 feet 5 inches. The deck is carpeted, but naturally alternatives are available. The galley is separated from the passageway by a clever island that also creates a place to serve drinks, finger foods, or even a buffet area. The salon is up two steps, and this owner requested opposing seating. Down below, the master is full beam. Choose from either seating beneath the hull side window or storage. And here's a request for a combo washer and dryer and an owner's safe. The VIP is forward and consists of an island berth with two hull side windows. The lower helm represents my favorite custom feature and makes this boat stand out as the first ever put into production without a steering wheel. Thanks to the Volvo Penta joystick steering, it works great. Still want a wheel? That's no problem. And this owner even selected one for the flybridge helm. Now for some questions from the U.S. Coast Guard Captain's Exam. Let's start with Rules of the Road. Our first question, which statement is true concerning the light used with whistle signals? Use of such light is required. Its purpose is to supplement short blasts of the whistle. The light shall have the same characteristics as the masthead light or all of the above. Well, the correct answer is B. Rule 34B says that any vessel may supplement the whistle signals prescribed in Rule A with light signals. And now one from the navigation exam. The period of high or low tide during which there is no change in the height of the water is called the A. Range of the tide, B. Plane of the tide, C. Stand of the tide, or D. Reversing of the tide. And the correct answer is C. The stand of the tide. This is a period where the tide has reached its maximum high or low, the level is stationary, and the currents fall away to zero. It's 
So if you want to swim across that river, wait for the stand of the tide. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a product review on the Rescue Link Personal Locator Beacon, and boy, did it generate email. Mostly with questions for more information. So, to get those answers, we reached out to Mikhail Darkangelo, Vice President of Global Marketing and Product Management for ACR. Mikhail, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Captain Steve. What makes Rescue Link different from an EPIRB? essentially have the exact same technology inside. The major difference is an EPIRB is designed to float in the water, designed to work for 48 hours. It's a lot of batteries, so it's going to work twice as long. Um, and it's designed to float in the water in a transmitting position. So you can just tie it to your life jacket or your life raft and, and let it be. With the Rescue Link, we've made them as small as possible. It's still buoyant, but it's buoyant in a floating position, so you can grab it and you're hopes and dreams aren't floating to the, to the bottom of the sea. You want to keep it mounted on a life jacket though, you know, somewhere out of the water, uh, whereas the EPIRB can be in the water. So either, you know, keep it in your hands, keep it tied to a life jacket. If you're not wearing a life jacket, that's when a personal locator beacon like the rescue link can be very difficult because you've got to tread water and keep it out of the water to get the message out. Uh, whereas an EPIRB, you know, let it flow, let it do its thing, it actually transmit better when it's when it's no, just flowing. Frankly, if you're not wearing a life jacket in a situation like this, shame on you. True, but that's why we make these kind of products to try to get you as rescued as fast as you possibly can. And now, do these require a subscription fee? Your only responsibility is to register the beacon. There's no subscription cost. You know, we do have an optional uh, subscription called Four Six Link. So you can take your beacon outside and do a self-test and you're instantaneously get a message onto your, uh, your cell phone device saying that the test was successful. You can have that routed up to five people. We're not in the business of selling subscriptions. You know, we're in the business of saving lives. So, you know, it, that's kind of the beauty of our products. Once you buy it, you don't ever have to really have to pay anything else. The Rescue Me MOB1, that's AIS based. What's the difference between that and the Rescue Link? Yeah. So that's a really good question. And AIS MOB, they're designed to be outfitted inside your life jacket. So when your life jacket goes off, that MOB one will automatically activate and start sending an AIS message to every boat within roughly around a five nautical mile range. Um, so they're really designed to be a, a local rescue. They're not sending a, a distress message off to the Coast Guard uh, or to any search and rescue agency. It's just vessels in the area that are equipped with an AIS receiver or transceivers. Is there a difference between the nearshore units and the offshore units? There's not really a difference. And at the very least, a personal locator beacon is a nice beacon to have, but boaters should have EPIRBs. Very well done on, on these products. And again, thank you so much for talking to us about this. This is great. Thanks for having us. Now that we're all boating again, send us your videos and pictures of how you're enjoying your boat while practicing social distancing. Here's a quick clip from longtime friend of Boat Test, Dr. Brett, on his Intrepid 327 showing excellent social distancing in Boca Raton's Lake Boca. Thanks for that, Dr. Brett. So that's our show for this week, as always. Keep those questions, pictures, and videos coming. Stay safe, practice social distancing, and thanks for watching. As always, I'm Captain Steve, and I'll see you on the water.